If you're wondering where to start or how exactly to approach your science CBAs, look no further. Today we're going to go through everything you need to know to do an exceptional science CBA 1 and an exceptional science CBA 2. This video will be split up into three parts, the first part being about the Science CBA 1, the second part being about the Science CBA 2, and the third part of the video will be all about some general tips and tricks that you can use in both CBAs. We'll add some timestamps in the description box below so you can go straight to what you're looking for. So what is the first Science CBA? The first CBA for Junior Cycle Science is called the Extended Experimental Investigation. You'll have three weeks to follow the scientific method to form a hypothesis on a question. And then you need to plan and conduct an experimental investigation to test your hypothesis. For those of you who don't know, a hypothesis is basically an assumption that you make that can be tested to see whether it's true or not. After this experiment, you'll then have to analyze the data you collected and reflect on the process. If all of this sounds super complicated to you, don't worry, you'll probably be put into a group to complete the CBA. So you won't have to do all of this work by yourself. It's also noteworthy that you can break down the CBA into four sections. The first being questioning and predicting, the second being planning and conducting, the third section is processing and analyzing, and the fourth section is reflecting and reporting. Arguably, the hardest part of the CBA is choosing a question to investigate. If you don't spend enough time thinking about what question you want to investigate, then you might end up with a really, really boring project, and you'll be stuck with that project for three weeks. So if you're struggling with coming up with a question for your CBA, then what I'd recommend is actually brainstorming what topics you found interesting in science and what topics you find interesting in general. So for example, if you're interested in heat and you're interested in fashion, then why not investigate which fabrics keep you warmer for longer? The science CBA one doesn't have to be overly complicated, it can really be as simple as that. So what is the second science CBA? CBA 2 for Junior Cycle Science is called the Science in Society Investigation. In this CBA, you'll spend three weeks researching a socio-scientific issue, you'll be analyzing the information or the secondary data collected, you'll be evaluating the claims and opinions studied, and then you'll draw evidence-based conclusions about the issues involved. These seemingly complicated instructions can be broken down into three sections. The first section being initiating research, the second section is communicating your findings, and the third section is evaluating the information. Similarly to the first CBA, you need to spend plenty of time choosing a topic to investigate, so that you don't end up with a really boring project that you'll have to spend three weeks investigating. Keep in mind that you can choose to complete the CBA on any topic that you're interested in or any issue that you're interested in, as long as it's relevant to something you've studied in science already or as long as it's relevant to the environment, society, or to human health. When you have chosen your topic and research question, you need to find out and reference information from articles, from reports, from any credible sources. The most important thing to know here is that all of the information you gather have to be from credible sources. Some online articles can distort or kind of misinterpret information for the sake of a good story. It's probably best for you to look at the original research rather than just relying on the journalist that wrote the article for your information. Basically, in this CBA, it's really important for you to evaluate the credibility of each source that you reference. When you have collected all of the information you need for your question, you can present your project in the following order. So for this first section, you need to explain the different sides of your topic in a structured manner. In this section, it's really important to use scientific terminology and to not express any opinions. In section two, you need to explain how this topic impacts the environment, human health, or society. And finally, in section three, you need to review the information that you've collected using scientific explanations, and then you need to give a justified scientific opinion. But remember that everything you say has to be backed by science. And here are some tips and tricks for both CBAs. So for both CBA 1 and CBA 2, you need to make a report. And this report can come in many forms as long as it includes significant detail. What I mean by this is you can write up your report using a pen on a piece of paper, or you can type up your report on a computer and then print it off. You can make a poster, you can film a video, you can make a little podcast episode if you want, you can do whatever. And if you're looking to do an exceptional CBA, then you need to make sure that you've covered all of the features of quality necessary to do an exceptional CBA. The features of quality is basically a document that your teacher will use to grade your CBA. Your CBAs don't have to be perfect for them to be exceptional, but it's really important that their strengths outweigh their weaknesses. 
So for an exceptional CPA, make sure that if you're using diagrams that they're all neat and tidy, that you use significant detail, that you use scientific terminology, and that everything looks neat and tidy and presentable. But if you really, really want to make sure that your CBAs will be exceptional, then I'd recommend checking out our CBA guides on the StudyClicks website. Within these guides, you can find report checklists, you can find ideas for what CBA projects you can do, you'll find loads of details and information that will make sure that you get as many marks as possible in your CBA. I particularly recommend checking out the report checklists in the CBA guides. Having a report checklist is a great way to keep track of what you've done and what you still need to complete. There's a lot to do in each CBA and it's easy to forget what you need to do or to leave out important elements. I'll leave a link in the description box below. If you have any CBA related questions, feel free to comment them down below. I hope this helps and best of luck with the study.